In this segment, we will be looking at cost behavior, cost volume, profit analysis. We begin with cost behavior because it is an important way through which management can predict and also control costs. There are five typical cost behaviors. We begin with the first three that are most popular. Variable costs represent costs that change with activity. These are proportionate to the units that are produced or the activity that's incurred. A great example of this would be wages per hour. Fixed cost is the opposite in that it does not change with activity. One example, a salary per month does not depend on the number of hours worked. Instead, the employee is compensated at a fixed rate. A mixed cost represent a combination of the two of these type of cost behaviors. For example, if one were to rent a U-Haul, the fixed fee might be $29.99 a day, but you pay $0.39 cents per mile. And then the other two costs that round out the five stepwise represent a unique type of cost behavior in that it is fixed but only within a relevant range. A great example of this would be perhaps if a company were to produce a 0 to 100 units, there's a distinct cost, but if it produced 101 to 200 units, the cost may change. These costs are categorized as either fixed or variable. The curvilinear cost is similar to the variable cost in that it increases with activity. However, it does increase at a non-constant rate. And though it's classified as a variable cost, it's not proportionate with activity. Let's look at how cost behavior is measured. The cost equation is used popularly within a managerial environment because it allocates total costs into two components, fixed costs and total variable costs. Our cost equation is accomplished by three methods. The first is the scatter diagram. The scatter diagram is the display of all the data points within a graph form in which the horizontal axis represents the units, but the vertical represents the dollars. The data points are fitted to a line in order to approximate the relationship between those units of volume and cost that's occurred. Now this is typically accomplished through a spreadsheet application. The second method is the high-low method, and the high-low method is on two points the highest or lowest. The first step is identifying the highest or lowest activity or volume of production. The second is to compute the variable cost per unit, which is similar to computing the slope of a line. And then the third is to substitute that variable cost per unit into the cost equation using the high or low data points as the other variables that are known. And then the third method, is the least squares regression approach, which is a statistical method on which all of the data points are plotted. And we also use a spreadsheet application such as Excel in order to come up with the cost equation. Now I will demonstrate each one of these using Excel in a subsequent segment. Contribution margin and break-even analysis. Contribution margin is the difference between the variable cost and total sales. The contribution margin, by definition, is the amount that remains to cover fixed costs. We can break it down on a per unit basis. We multiply our selling price by the quantity sold or our variable cost per unit by the quantity produced. Q in this are constant and are equal so that unit contribution margin is equal to the selling price minus the variable cost per unit. The expression of our contribution margin as a ratio would indicate what percentage of our sales dollars is available to cover fixed costs. So the idea of contribution margin focuses primarily on the variable costs, fixed costs. That introduces then the contribution format income statement. This statement is simply the division of costs based on this particular format. We start with our sales and subtract variable costs, then we subtract fixed costs in order to yield net income. Contribution format income statement is used typically by management personnel, and we'll see why in just a second. Break-even analysis, the point at which there's no profit, but there is no loss. Break-even may be computed on the basis of the units that need to be sold, or it might be computed based on the dollars of sales. Either way, the formula is our fixed cost divided by our contribution margin or the fixed cost divided by our contribution margin ratio. The margin of safety represents the amount of sales above the break-even point. So let's look at an example of the contribution format income statement and break-even within the cost volume profit analysis environment. 
The contribution format income statement, I showed that as one line in a horizontal statement, but this would look more appropriately like the presentation that is expected. Sales minus variable costs would be equal to a contribution margin. In this case, it's $225,000. When we subtract fixed costs, which in, again, in this example is $800,000, we actually have a loss of $575,000. One of the important questions that management may ask is, well, how much do we need to break even? Now, I know the automatic answer is $575,000 more, but that cannot be the answer because if our variable cost changes with each unit sold, we have to know what is our variable cost per unit and our selling price per unit in order to determine how many sales we need to make in order to break even. So let's look at the total units in order to compute the per unit data. If the example is based on the sale of 50,000 units and we compute this on a per unit basis, then my sales per unit is going to be equal to $10. Variable costs similarly would be equal to $5.50 and contribution margin would be equal to $4.50. And if you recall, break even is equal to fixed cost divided by our contribution margin per unit. So let's clean the slate really quickly. If a company had fixed cost of $800,000, how many sales in units does it need to break even? Well, if we compute break even in units first, we would divide our fixed cost by our contribution margin. In this case, it will be 177, 777.78 units. Now, I cannot sell 0.78 units, so I will round that up because if I round it down, I make a loss. So I'm going to round that up we will need to sell 177 778 units. With that said, we can compute our total sales. We're multiplying that number of units by the selling price. Variable costs, we're gonna multiply it by $5.50. And once we subtract those variable costs, we get a contribution margin of 800,000 that approximate our fixed costs. So in order to get our break-even point, we had to divide the fixed cost by the contribution margin per unit. There were two formulas, break even in units, break even in dollars. If I wanted to know the amount of dollars, could I have accomplished the same thing? Absolutely. I would divide my fixed cost by my contribution margin ratio. My contribution margin of 450 would be divided by my selling price of $10, which would yield 0.45. So when I do the math to accomplish that, you will notice that my total sales as reflected based on break-even units approximate my sales based on the division by contribution margin ratio. The results are fairly similar. So let's recap what it is that we have learned. In order to compute break-even, we would take the contribution margin per unit and divide it into the fixed cost. With that said, let's take this a little bit further and look at how we can chart the cost volume profit analysis. This particular graph representation shows the total cost and the total revenues that's incurred by a company. The bottom section represents my fixed costs. Please note that my fixed cost is an amount that does not depend on the units that are sold or the units that are produced. So at a quantity of zero, my fixed cost, using the example from before, would be $800,000. If I were to chart my total cost line, it would start at the point where $800,000 represent the fixed cost. That would be my total cost line. My total revenue line would start at zero because it represents the sale per unit that's made. So with no sales, I make zero revenue. But every time I make a sale, my total revenue line increases. And the point at which these intersect represent break even. And so with that said, this is the cost volume chart that depicts the relationship between my cost and my volume and subsequent profit. How do I determine my profit? My profit will be anything to the right of the break even point, but my loss will be anything to the left of the break even point. There are many other ways in which cost volume profit analysis is beneficial. One of those is determining the number of units I must sell in order to accomplish a certain profit goal. What a company would therefore do is add its target profit to the fixed cost. The profit is treated essentially as if it is a fixed cost. So fixed cost plus target profit is going to yield the amount that I need in order to accomplish a certain set goal. This is how management translate those profit goals to sales goals for its sales team. How else is cost volume profit analysis beneficial? Well, one of the other benefits is the prediction of the impact of on changes. 
So if, for example, there was an increase in fixed costs, break-even is going to increase. If my variable cost dropped, then my contribution margin increases, right? Because I would be making more money. Selling price minus less variable cost means I'm making more, and therefore my break-even point would drop. The same thing with selling price. If selling price increase, then my break-even units would decrease because I'm making more money. However, my selling price drop, I need to sell more in order to break even. So with cost volume profit analysis, we can vary the, the different cost components to determine the impact on break even and subsequently the impact that these will have on my profit line. Take care.